Judge, you've got accused of a lot of really bad stuff, including helping a felon to have a firearm. Yeah, it's kind of discouraging. True or false? Well, I've got a trial in about nine days, Governor. <laughs> <laughs> so do you need to be careful what you say? You know, my lawyers don't even know I'm here. Uh-oh. I bet they'd say don't do it, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, they probably would. But you're a lawyer. That's true. And I'm Bob Mueller. Good to have you nice here. Nice to meet you. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was going to be... I thought these questions were going to be in writing. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. So, so what is the basic issue? I mean, they have really gone after you. And, and I've read through a lot of this stuff. And, and some of it just seems bizarre to me. And I'm just looking at it, you know, from a person at a distance. Well, if this wasn't about me... I find this case fascinating. I mean, it really... Yeah, it is fascinating. Yeah, it, um, it is bizarre. But it's not about a gun, Governor. It's, oh. it's about, I believe, my personal decision to quietly recuse myself from same-sex marriage, which is a circuit court judge. It's not my job to marry people. I can if they come and ask me, and sure. I choose to. I, I enjoy weddings. And, uh, but when a federal judge decided by fiat that Oregon Constitution was wrong, that it wasn't between a man and woman, I had a decision to make. I made that decision quietly with my staff, and I just asked them to refer any same-sex couples to a different judge. I love my brothers and sisters who are gay. I have nothing against them, but I have a firmly held religious belief that marriage is between a man and a woman. And once you made that decision, that's when all the trouble started, and then it was like an avalanche of issues that you were accused of. They took the shotgun approach, I believe. Yeah. I mean, let's try to throw everything at them, because they really don't want to address my liberty of conscience as a judge. They want to smear with me with something else, you know, tarnish my reputation, and then say, well, that's why we're getting rid of him. But I don't believe that. You were actually appointed by a Democrat governor. I was. So it's, it's not like that you were some hardcore political person that would have only been acceptable to right-wing, crazy, religious nuts or well, something you, like that. You, you might want to talk to some of the people in Oregon because <laughs> I, was, I was chairman of the Oregon Republican Party for four years so that... A Democrat governor appointed me was kind of a shock to the system. I, I would imagine that it was. But the fact that he did appoint you says, and knowing that, that former governor, I knew him, um, that he was not Mr. Bipartisanship, okay? I mean, I think that's an understatement. Oh, I'm being charitable in saying that. Mm -hmm. So he saw that you were a, a person of integrity. Yet all of these charges uh, really do go across the board, the most serious of which is that you assisted a former felon, who by the way was a disabled veteran, mm -hmm. uh, to obtain a firearm. But it wasn't like you gave him one that he owned. Oh, no, it's, uh, the, there, I believe that the state's storyline is a bunch of hooey. Can, can I say that on television? You just did. Hooey. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Sorry. Yes, we, we can handle that. There's some other words we probably wouldn't, but that one's fine. Um, and people have read the story before, but the, the short of the long is, is that I went over there to his home because he was a disabled veteran in my veterans court, and he only had one source of heat, and in the dead of winter, that heat failed. So my son, who is his friend, we went over to his home. I was working on the pellet stove, and my son went out, got an empty pistol from the truck, brought it in, showed it to this disabled Navy SEAL, mm -hmm. and that's the aiding and abetting. That's why they're charging me with a felony. That's why they want to put me in jail for a maximum of potentially 12 years. You could go to jail? Yeah. For 12 years? That's the maximum penalty for everything that they've thrown at me. That's but correct. But you really believe, and you know, as I've gone back and looked at this case, everything started when you made the decision. And again, I think you said it very uh, appropriately. You didn't go and have a news conference. You just quietly declined to do weddings, even though you were not required to do them by the law. Mm -hmm. And you just said, you know, I'm not comfortable doing that. And that was it. But that resulted in all these things. You know, earlier, Judge, I talked about uh, th this notion in a George Washington University professor is doing a seminar on Christian privilege. You don't seem to be among the privileged here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, I've watched people stand up with me over the last four years, Governor. I believe there's a groundswell happening in these United States that people are coming back to recognize that the government cannot take away that which it didn't give. Hmm. That the, my inalienable rights are given to me by my creator. 
and that when government tries to step in and remove those rights, to take them from us, that's an act of tyranny. Here's what is of concern to me. The government has unlimited resources to come after you. They can use all the lawyers, and they can hire additional lawyers, and when they come after you, you have to use your own money, mm -hmm. and that's limited, and you have to defend yourself. I mean, a lot of people just give up. A lot of Christians just say, I can't fight this. It's, it's hard. I mean, you, you not only could risk 12 years of your life in prison, but utter financial ruin. I have a strong family. My wife is like a granite rock. My children are people of integrity and, and character. And when we faced this, we had a decision to make. You know, you can, if you just give up Judge Day and you go away, it'll all go away. It'll all be quietly done. But we looked at it as a family and said, no, I did nothing wrong. This is my liberty. And if they want to come get my liberty, they're going to have to fight me tooth and nail to get it, and I will never give up. And so... Well, I'm, I'm glad you're not. And frankly, if people like you don't stand up, even at great cost, then we lose this great republic well, of ours. No doubt because about it. there's no way to survive. And we have a duty, Governor, to stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. Yes, who, we do. And, and these people understand it. Your audience understands it. Well, thank you. And I want to keep up with your case, and we'll report back to our audience in a few weeks when the trial is over. Thank you very much for being here, Judge. Let me also say to you, if you want to learn more about Judge Day and his case, go online. The website is called defendjudgeday.com. Let me give it to you again, defendjudgeday.com. Hope you'll check it out.